Hi, ladies and gentlemen, it's Dr. Julian Avoa. Don't you hate when you're in the middle of typing a long message and Facebook crashes and then you're like, Ugh, what am I supposed to do? I lost all that information. Do I go ahead and type it all over again or do I do a little video and answer a question? So I decided I was going to answer a question by doing a video rather than to go ahead and typing 10 minutes of information back to a message. So I apologize because whoever asked me the question, I lost the question too when, the, when my Facebook crashed. So hopefully this will answer the question, especially for all of you out there that have questions related to the VBAC or the vaginal birth after cesarean section. The message was basically, listen, I have a friend uh, who's going to a doctor and that doctor said, I don't care how many VBACs you've had, I'm not going to help you with a VBAC. Uh, I don't think that it's safe, I think it's dangerous, and therefore I don't do them. And the question was, is it a matter of liability? Uh, why would doctors not want to do VBACs? And so the easiest way to answer that question, any doctor that tells you that VBACs are dangerous, find yourself another doctor. Any doctor that tells you that it's not what is recommended is going against the nationally stated recommendations of the American Congress of Obstetrics and Gynecology, the CDC, the uh, Department of Health and Human Services and the World Health Organization. Specifically, most women, the vast majority of women that have had at least one vaginal, excuse me, one cesarean section should be encouraged to attempt the vaginal birth after cesarean section. I'll say that again. Most low-risk women that have had only one cesarean section by all the national and international standards should be encouraged to attempt a vaginal birth after cesarean section. For those ladies that have had two previous cesarean sections, that should be discussed and should also be offered in the majority of cases to women with two previous cesarean sections should be offered the vaginal birth after cesarean section. For women that have had more than uh, two cesarean sections, the recommendation still stands that it should not be attempted or the vaginal, uh, the VBAC should not be attempted. So I hope that answers the basic questions. So doctors out there that are actually telling their patients that the VBAC is dangerous or not recommending it are actually going against the national guidelines of informed consent. Again, they're either not representing the information correctly or they're outright lying to you about the VBAC. So find yourself another doctor. Now, let's go on to the issues of liability. Yes, there is a possibility that you could have a complication related to the VBAC. But in comparison to everything else that could happen on labor and delivery, you're better off trying for the vaginal birth than you are uh, for the repeat cesarean section, especially if you're going to plan on having a lot of children and you're going to plan on having a lot of cesarean sections. The best way to do it is to have the VBAC because once you've had a VBAC, the probability of a complication significantly decreases because your uterus has been proven to be strong enough to be able to withstand labor contractions and be able to deliver uh, vaginally. Next, if you show up at the hospital in advanced dilatation, that means that you're seven or eight centimeters dilated, it is inappropriate for your doctor to demand or insist on a cesarean section at that time because by the time that your cervix, your, uh, cervix gets to eight centimeters, your uterus has pretty much proven itself that it can handle the last two centimeters and that you could probably deliver vaginally again. That's very, very important. But what have I seen many, many times is that patients are whisked off down to, uh, to the operating room to have an unnecessary cesarean section because the doctor insists that they're not going to allow for a VBAC to occur, even though the patient is practically delivering. And I've seen it too where patients are practically crowning and their doctors are rushing them down the hall to do the C-section. So is it a matter of liability? Yes, it is a matter of liability because we're scared to death. We've been taught over and over and over again that VBACs are um, dangerous. We've been improperly taught that because it's not true. Second of all, uh, to do a repeat cesarean section takes approximately 15 minutes. Whether, but to do a VBAC, you've got to sit there with your patient for 12, 24, 36 hours, and you don't get paid as much. So more than a liability, it's a matter of convenience. The vast majority of doctors do not want to do VBACs because we get paid more for a cesarean section and we can do it in 15 minutes. So it's a matter of the convenience of the doctor. So I want this to be 
a call to arms basically, a shout out to all of those women that are being lied to. We're talking about more than half a million women uh, a, a, a year in the United States are being lied to about the necessity of a cesarean section and in many cases the necessity of a repeat cesarean section. So to answer the question yet again, in the vast majority of patients that have had at least one cesarean section are, and are considered low risk, you should be encouraged to try for the VBAC. For two previous cesarean sections and still considered low risk for other reasons, you should be offered the VBAC. That's what needs to happen. If you don't get that straight message from, from your doctor, find yourself another doctor. If you have any more questions related to the VBAC, we do have a VBAC website. It's www www.vbacelpaso.com and if you have any more questions feel free to set up an appointment with us at uh, um, Novoa Medical Services by calling 915-595-9944. I hope this answers your question. Thank you for asking. Bye.